Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial with me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to build an RGB display. So, we're going to basically create the pixels and then control them using um, the MoGraph field system in Cinema 4D. You can see I've got Cinema open, and if we come up to the object manager, I've got a capsule in a null with a radius of 0 0.08 and a height of 0.55. Um, and what we want is we want three of these and we basically want them to make a square. So I'm going to just move this one over minus 0 0.165. Let's make a copy of that and change that to a positive value. And then we just need to create another one and put that in the middle. And we can reset the X position on this one to be zero. So now you can see we've got these three sort of pixel shapes um, for our RGB, our red, green and blue. Now if we select the null, hold down Alt and add in a cloner as a parent, under the object tab I am going to first of all use multi instance because we're going to have quite a few of these and that will make it much faster. Rather than grid, let's use honeycomb. So we get a kind of honeycomb pattern, obviously. And I want to set mine up to be 16.9. Um, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller than this, say 96 by 54 okay can't really see much here because it's so big and you can see obviously we're going to need a lot more pixels than this so if we just come down I'm going to just increase these I'm not going to worry about being too specific about the number of pixels I'm just going to make sure that we fill it out um, so that they're packed together nicely can't really see much now let's just change the shading um, and there you go and you can see now we've got all of these capsules making up these individual pixels for our display so the next thing that we need to do is add in a plane effector and I'm going to just call this one red if we switch to the parameter tab let's switch off position the only thing we're really interested in is a color mode and that should default to fields color so now if we switch to the fields tab let's come down and add in a shader field this allows us to load uh, movies bitmaps etc um, so we're going to come down under the field tab, make sure it's set to custom shader, and then I'm going to load in this super cool smiley animation. If we open up the bitmap shader, switch to animation, just hit calculate, you can see that it's um, basically 50 frames long. I'm going to adjust the project to be the same. So we've got 0 to 49 frames at 25 frames a second. If we select the shader field, just let me just pull this up, come down to the bottom here, we've got this refresh frame option. If we enable that, when we scrub the timeline we're going to see that animation in the viewport and you can see as I scrub backwards and forwards we can see the super cool smiley animation it looks like I've got it the wrong way around actually because it's flipped but we can we can fix that later that's fine if we zoom in you can see that it's currently coloring all of those based on the color but what we want to do is we just want to switch to the red channel so under strength select red now switch to color remap and we're going to remap this with a gradient so we want it so it's when it's 100% value, we want that to be red. So select the white knot, come down, switch to RGB, and let's set that to 25500. And now you can see that we are only displaying the red information. So what we need to do next is take this and copy it, and we're going to have a green one, and then we're going to have a blue one. Once we've renamed these, we need to just select each of these effectors, switch to the Fields tab, and we're going to just change that to the correct color in both the strength. So we're going to set that to green, and under the color remap, we're going to select that not and make that 0.2550. So it's pure green. And then, of course, on the last one, the blue one, we're going to do the same again. Come here, set that to blue, and on the gradient, let's set that not to be 0.0. zero. 255 so that we've got pure blue now we have our effector set up but we've only got one cloner so I'm going to just call this cloner red and I'm going to copy this call this one you guessed it green and then another one blue so in each of these new cloners we need to delete the effector that's in there and replace it with the appropriate new effector so obviously in the green we put the green plane effector and in the blue we put the blue one okay now at the moment each of these cloners has got three pixels in each one all in the right place um, so what we can easily do is just come in and just switch off um, the 
pixels that we don't need like this and there you go and you can see now we're getting a full color display and we've actually recreated that RGB effect um, using these fields and you can see that now the individual capsules are actually coloring themselves based on the RGB channels you can see that when you're up close but when we pull out obviously the colors blend together and we get the full color image just as it would work on a classic CRT television okay so I'm just going to set the length V to minus 100 because I did actually map it the wrong way around and now they should be rolling across oh they look much happier that way so there we go that's basically how we build the setup okay for some reason I was in R25 just jumped into R26 because I'm going to set this up for rendering but before we do that I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit so let's um, just create a null and we can put everything in here so it's just a little bit neat and tidy um, I want to put the cloners at the top with the effectors afterwards and now let's select these three cloners and just come up and add in a random effect I'm going to just add a little bit of randomness around the edges I mean this is all extra stuff that isn't necessary um, but you know I just thought it'd be nice to finish the tutorial with a little render so we can see what it looks like so I'm going to add in a box field and let's come down and remapping and just invert that so that it's going to randomize the clones that are outside if we switch off the other clones it's going to be a bit quicker now we can just adjust the inner fall off and then the overall size of this box field and you can see that as we pull it towards the edge we get that kind of random position let's do the bottom okay so with the random let's adjust the position y so we don't have so many going down I'm going to add in a random field and this field I'm going to um, change the noise type I'm going to set this to be mod noise so it's sort of pixely and set it to subtract there you go and you can see that's just subtracting um, around the edge so we get a little bit of nice breakup of those pixels around the edge and if we animate that noise as well we're going to um, get quite an interesting result maybe we should scale it down okay and let's add some animation set that to 100 and set the loop period to be 50 frames so that we're going to get a seamless loop and there you go okay switch the others on that's the result now of course you can use any image or video um, you don't have to use a funny smiley face thing like I have um, that's the joy of this setup so I'm just going to just add in a few environmental things such as some floor let's pull that down um, let's come up and create a camera and I'm going to use a redshift fisheye for this let's make that the active camera I'm going to set the field of view to be quite a lot lower so it's not quite so extreme but we still get that lovely sort of bendy fisheye wide angle effect okay so that will do let's open materials create a new redshift material and we call this one floor um, and let's create another one and we're going to call this one no pixel okay so with the floor I'm going to leave that that kind of gray color uh, but I'm just going to add a little bit of roughness to the reflection but what I want to do is I want to make it so that the pixels themselves illuminate the scene so if you were kind of creating like a CRT TV or something like that you could use this trick and it would illuminate the actual environment as well which obviously looks pretty cool so let's open up our node editor here's the material that we've got um, we need to add in some color user data so that we can read the MoGraph color so select that color user data and we're going to link that in to the overall emission so that's the emission color um, if we select our color user data node we need to see which attribute so we're going to choose MoGraph um, and it's the MoGraph color it's just sorry it's just cropped off the edge there um, and then let's set the emission weight to one or maybe I might set that to two so with this material basically we have no diffuse color and no reflection and the emission um, is the only place that actually is outputting anything and because it's the emission channel it's going to contribute to the global illumination and this is the result that we get so that's the end of the tutorial hope you enjoyed that obviously there are many uses for this and comp will go a long way um, thanks for watching